So Limbus Company is close to finishing, or has finished, depending on when I'm uploading this, its first season. This season was the first of many to come, and as such, it's a pretty big shoes to fill as an introduction. Did it do its job though? Oh, we'll get there. Before we go any further, I need to express something. God forbid this is the first video of mine that you're watching, but if it is, I need you to know that everything I say in this video, positive or negative, comes from a place of love. Yes, I, I have nearly 300 hours in Limbus and I've spent dozens more editing love letters for this game. But I do feel the need to be honest and express my negatives of Limbus with my platform. As whenever I see anybody say something bad about it normally, they either get witch hunted or just fully ignored for just having an opinion. I also won't be covering the main story in this video as that's for another day entirely. But I will tackle Hell's Chicken when we get there. But just in case you're curious, here are my quickfire thoughts so far. Canto 1, phenomenal opener that feels like early game ruin in tone and style and it is just so good. Canto 2, tries too hard to be funny and but ultimately it feels rushed, which is a downright shame because it has the best fight music in the entire game in the ice dungeon, and Rodion herself is a great character that deserves more development. Canto 3, Can Canto 3? What? What do you mean, Sinclair? What the fuck is that? There's only 11 sinners, you dumbass. Count them. No, I'm merely here to catalogue my opinions on everything added post-launch, with the hopes that this time in Season 2, I'll be a happier man. Okay, but without further ado, let's begin. Let's get the main course of the season done now. The Battle Pass. Oh boy, the Battle Pass. There's probably the second biggest point of contention pre-release other than the fact that the game itself is a gacha. Now, I've completed many a battle pass in my day. I'd say I'm a big fan of them, in fact. I love having a checklist of stuff to chip away at aside from the main game. The Limbus Company? Phew, it does not have a fun checklist, but I will give a bonus point for being super easy to level up. This is good for a mobile game considering it really does just require logging on every day and taking like 5 minutes to play. But why must how level it up? Well, to get such incredible rewards like XP tickets and ego shared crates. Oh yeah, an ego. Yeah, the main draw of the battle pass is these luscious ego, which can only be obtained for 10 smackaroos and a little bit of grinding. But don't worry, if you miss out on some literal must-haves like Faust Fluid Sack, then you only have to wait an entire other season to get a chance to roll for them. Or if you're feeling extra spicy, just wait till season 2 and spark them all for 400 ego shards of pop. Yet, this is where the core issues of Limbus being a gacha game slips its dirty fingers in. It's not limited time, but basically limited time gameplay content. Sure, you don't need those eagles to play the game. But how many of you want to admit that you beat the railway under 120 turns without these two? Because I'm willing to say it's not a lot of ya. But hey, look, I'm in the same boat. These two carried me, specifically Fausts. The only benefit I could give the battle pass is that you have 90 days to complete it. Which, in my experience, is way more than enough time to get it all done. But as I see it, you should be able to roll for the Ego in the Battle Pass in the next season immediately afterwards. I genuinely don't know why you have to wait. As far as I see projects moving, you're just missing out on easy money. Ah, but I digress. After all, what good is Ego if you don't have identities to use them with? Identities are the absolute bread and butter of Limbus Company, the be-all end-all of this game's income and lifespan. And well, if you're looking for an in-depth review of their skills, or a critical analysis of team compositions, then I am not your guy, not even close. Look, I make gameplay edits for Limbus. I have learned to judge books entirely by their covers. You see, because in Runa you use books to upgrade your character. An ID is only good in my eyes based on three factors. How drippy they are, how cool their attacks look, and how meaty they sound. So instead of dragging you by the hand and giving my opinions on every single ID as they release and forcing myself to look at numbers, here's my tier list of every ID in the game as of the end of Season 1. I'll be adding on to this in each one of these videos at the end of every season, and by the end of the game we can see who really is the best and who's the worst. This tier list is based off of a mix of style and how fun they are to use. As of right now, you are the most fun and you are the most stylish. But I do really look forward to see how this evolves over the coming seasons. I feel like I'm missing someone though. Hmm. Oh yeah! Whooped on! Definitely top tier. But now I'm all geared up and ready for Freddy. Time to talk about the actual content that was added in Season 1. Railway Refraction and Hell's Chicken. Be warned, this is where my opinions start to get really negative. So 
the Rail Raver faction was added, and it was designed to be a super hard dungeon for only the pro players. Or players with a ton of money. It consists of 13 back-to-back -back tough as nails fights where you have to min-max the hell out of your meticulously crafted team. Or just use Don and Heath, yeah, whatever works. Rail Raver faction just doesn't work here. Limbus Company at its core is an extremely easy game, because nearly every ID is absolutely busted in its own right. All Railway does is fall back on the same issues Runa had with artificial difficulty, and jacking the opponent's stats so high through the roof that it's just not fun to play. It's just, it wasn't fun, it's a slog. And speaking of Runa, this would have at least kinda worked there, because you could build builds by hand and have up to 9 different attacks per deck. But not here though. Limbus Company battles just do not lend themselves for precision and skill. It's a fast-paced, brain-dead auto-battler, not a slow, methodical, pseudo-turn-based RPG. And hey, look, that's fine. Lobcorp is radically different from Ruina 2, and that's still an alright game. That's not my issue. My issue stems from Limbus trying to be something that it's not. Railway Refraction is a bastardized middle ground that just feels awkward and clunky to play. If Limbus wasn't a gacha, and instead a single-player game, then they could take a ton more effort into the Ruina direction of analytical battles. But also, if it was a single-player game, there'd be absolutely zero need for the Railway in the first place. It's an issue that runs deep into the core of Limbus and gacha games as a whole, and I don't really want to tackle it right now. So just know that me no like you, really. The rewards were pretty generous, though, I'll give them that, even if it costed 25 modules. My second, and also my best run, is 111 turns. I will admit that the new K-Corp dudes in the Abno fights are pretty cool, even if we had to fight another. Nothing there. Jesus himini Christ, Project Moon. You have more than two fucking A-lifts. Please give us a blue star fight next time. I will do anything. This is where the fun begins. Hell's Chicken. Boy, oh boy. The first bit of story since the launch of the game, and it's completely comedy focused. A lot of people love this. I am not a lot of people. I simply do not like when Project Moon tries to do comedy. Like, believe you me, I completely see the irony in that. Don't worry, it's not lost on me. But I have genuinely never been more bored playing anything by Project Moon in my life than Hell's Chicken. I went into this with almost zero expectations after Railway. I knew I'd get the Pierre and Jack IDs, that's about all, I wasn't looking forward to it too much. But man, oh man, I was so bored. After the event, someone replied to me with a message, you couldn't have possibly expected an event called Hell's Chicken to be serious. And yeah, I wasn't, you have some merit to that, but I also wasn't expecting an hour long cringe fest that had me literally skipping cutscenes by the end out of sheer boredom. Look, the humour just isn't for me. And yeah, yeah, I know, I know, humour is subjective. But so is my opinion, and this is also my video about my opinions, and in my opinion, I did not find this event funny. I remember being a little miffed at the beginning cutscene of Dante asking what a distortion is when literally just before this we fought one, but I guess he just forgot to ask what the fuck was going on there, huh? I was just kind of floating along. I did get one chuckle, not with the game, but at it when they mentioned Ham Ham Pang Pang. God, I love when they self-promote this. It wouldn't be a Project Moon product, aside from Lob Corp, if they didn't shill Ham Ham Pang Pang. But that smile instantly faded when a chicken latched onto Heathcliff's head. And I slumped in my chair knowing that it's going to be like this for the next hour. Random thing happens because random week was funny. And I was right, I spent the rest of it just pressing win rate and speed reading the cutscenes. Look, it's a bad sign for me when I unironically laughed more with Wonderlab than I could laugh more at this event. I am going to get crucified for saying that, but that is the truth. However, I will give this event one thing in its favour. Don cutting the potatoes into stairs was really fucking cute, because wow, this girl has an obsession with stairs. Both of the city and the night guide, and also this foul stairs, but you already know. But that's only the story. As an interlude, it's completely harmless. It ends where it begins, and literally nothing is gained but a plushie for Sharon. Karen. Sharon. 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 I don't care. I don't fucking know how to pronounce her name. Oh. Well, all that's left now to do is do the dungeon a few more times for the banner. You can defend Railway. Maybe you like the difficulty. You can defend the story of Hell's Chicken. Sure, maybe I'm just a negative Nancy for not finding it funny. But you cannot defend this. 6,000 plushies for a butt-ass ugly banner that isn't even translated. With a team of Jack, Pierre and Soup Don giving me an 80% bonus, it still took me dozens upon dozens of runs just to do this. Each one is brain dead as the last. 
Originally, this event was only gonna last two weeks, so everyone had to stop what they were doing immediately and go grind the hell's chicken out of it. And then two days before it was gonna end, they extended it again. Now that's scummy timing. Look, I'm glad they extended it for the people who don't have the banner, but at the same time, this is just downright ridiculous. And it just shows a complete lack of interest or care from the devs. Because at the end of it, like, the rewards aren't even worth it. They're complete garbage. If the next event has this bad of a grind, then I'm not even gonna bother. I see some people trying to defend it by saying, oh, well, Fate does it, so it's alright. Fate's a completely different game with a completely different audience. Just because one person plays one catch, it doesn't mean it plays them all, and we certainly don't have time for all of them. But I think if Hell's Chicken proved anything for me, then it proved that Slap in the Faces of my favourite characters onto the Sinners just can't distract me from the fact I don't like the game. And that my flaws just come from a place of pure disappointment rather than hatred. That is incredibly depressing when I say it out loud. By the way, this goes double for the inevitable head IDs. But as many of you know, when that happens, I'm gone. Pierre and Elaine are still the best guests in Ruin and the biggest girl bosses in City. This event has changed nothing. So in conclusion, did I like Season 1? No. I'll be honest and say that I hated it. If you loved it, then I am sincerely jealous. I am genuinely jealous of you that you can just enjoy it because everything they've added just hasn't been for me. Do I think it was a good introduction? For new players, sure, yeah. I can't really speak on that though. But for longtime fans, in my opinion, absolutely not. It tries too hard to be its ancestors while also being itself, but it's just pick one and stick with it. Oh, and hey, on the topic, if you're this fair and still think I have a bias for Ruina, no sir, I do not. Early game Ruina is peak and the reason why I love Kanto 1 so much, but everything from Sarah to City onwards sucks donkey balls, and <laughs> that's over half the game. I'm not a Ruina fanboy, don't get it twisted, but I'm certainly not a Limbus one either. Look, I just hope Season 2 is better, but people would already know I'm probably going to hate it too. But hey, I'll keep my head up and I'll keep making content. Just as long as nothing on my quit list happens, then it's an okay season in my eyes. This is going to happen though, isn't it? I just want to say as a little bonus also, I'm sure you're all sick to the back tonsils of me thanking you so much for all the incredible support, but you do not realise how just fun it's been making these edits compared to memes. I actually feel genuinely inspired to create now. I may not like the season, but I do enjoy editing it. Like, I can chat all the shit I want about Limbus, but these visual improvements, man, they are top notch. We're at 4.7 thousand subscribers now. If we can get to 5,000 before the summer, I promise you I will make a special worth sticking around for. It may take a bit longer, but we'll get there. Look, thank you once again, and I'll see you whenever. Bring back distortion detective. Like and subscribe for more Limbus. Bye, love you!